Hey team, welcome back. We're gonna talk about shear flow again. I told you, I promised you that I would give you a harder problem. There it is. So we're talking about shear flow and built up members. That's when I have a, a beam that is built of multiple pieces, but it's this, in this case, it's nailed together. So the goal for this guy here is to find the spacing of these nails as they go along the beam there at point B and C. So one of them is nailed, you know, horizontally and one of them is vertically, okay? So we wanna find what's the spacing for the horizontal nails, what's the spacing for the vertical nails. If the beam is like fixed on one end and on the other end it has an 80 pound concentrated load, okay? And it tells us down here that the nail can support no more than 30 pounds in shear force, okay? So we gotta figure this out. So what we're doing here, we're trying to find the spacing of the nails Okay, and that is, um, we're gonna use this equation here, Q equals VQ over I, the um, shear flow equation, okay? And then we'll use the, the uh, spacing equation, right, uh, to, to come up with the end of it. Uh, so what we have here is Q equals VQ over I. So I guess we need to find these things, right? V and I are pretty simple. Let's see if we can find those first. Now, V is just the shear force. You know, if we were going to do a shear diagram of that, right? Here's our shear diagram. V, right? I have, you know, global equilibrium. I've got 80 pounds going down, so what do I have to have over here at this side? I have to have 80 pounds going up, right? So if I drew the shear diagram, it would go up 80 pounds, no change, no change, no change, and at the end of the beam, boop, back down 80 pounds. So that would be my shear diagram. So the shear force V anywhere in that beam is what? It's 80 pounds, isn't it? So V equals 80 pounds everywhere. Okay? So along the whole length of the beam, okay? Is that pretty clear? That's pretty easy, right? Since we're experts at shear diagrams now. Um, how about I? Well, here's a cross section of the beam. I ought to be pretty easy to calculate also, right? So I is equal to, it's, it's rectangular. As a matter of fact, I know that the neutral axis is gonna be right in the middle. So I is 1 12th, um, well, let's do BH cubed of the whole thing and then we'll subtract off the middle, and that should give us I. So the base is what, six plus 1.5, 7.5, and the height is also 7.5. 112 BH cubed minus, here comes the middle. Um, the middle is what? If that's 7.5, and that's 1.5 and 1.5, so that's three off of 7.5, so that makes the middle 4.5, right? Like that, okay? So 1 12th the base times the height, and that should do it, okay? And let's see, I've already calculated this for us. I got I is equal to 229.4, inches to the fourth, okay? So that's pretty good. We, we Now we know two of these things for this equation. We know V is 80 pounds, and we know I is 229.4 inches to the fourth. And that, again, is everywhere. I'm not gonna make, I is not gonna be different for the C equation than it is for the B equation, okay? So far, so good, right? Let's erase that. All right, and here comes the hard part. I think the hard part of these is what is capital Q, right? What is uh, that first area moment of inertia? So let's do it for B first, okay? So B is the one that I'm trying to shear. Um, the, the shear plane is horizontal. The shear plane over here is vertical, okay? So let's do Q for point B. All right, so here's the deal. Think of this, it has to be symmetric, this shear plane. Think of what I'm going to have to tear off. So what of this beam would I have to tear away to tear through that? And it has to be symmetric. 
That means if I tear on one side horizontally, I got to tear horizontally on the other side. Okay, so this Q has to be a symmetric plane. Uh, a symmetric plane. Okay, and so I'm tearing off that whole top of there. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to tear through here. Let's do it in blue so you can see it. I'm going to have to tear through here, and I'm going to have to tear through here. Now over here I'm tearing through the nails, but over there I'm actually tearing through the wood. That's a little confusing, isn't it? Because a lot of people would say, oh, let's just, let's just tear that top board off and we'll tear there. Well, that's not a symmetric plane because then I would be tearing a horizontal plane and a vertical plane. So it has to be symmetric. So if I tear horizontal on one side, I got to do horizontal on the other side. So what would Q at point B be? Okay, remember that's everything above point B. So that is this whole area here, okay? And Q, remember, is the Y bar times A. Let's see, so Y bar, how far is it from here to there? Well, that's half of that. So that's 2.25, and then I gotta go to there. There's the centroid for that shape. Let's see, and that's, uh, what, another 0.75? Because the whole thing's 1.5. So 0 0.75 and 2.25 is three, right? So that's the Y bar portion there. So what is the A portion? Well, that's just the area here, which is 7.5 by 1.5. Okay, and that is, what is that? 33.75. And remember the units for Q is inches cubed, okay? Is that, so let's see if we can use that same thing and find what is QC gonna be, okay? So if I'm gonna tear through point C now, which is a vertical, where do I tear through over here? Again, it has to be a symmetric plane, right? Let's put a star by that, okay? Which means if I tear vertical over here, I gotta tear vertical over here, so I'm gonna tear through right there, okay? So for this one, the, the area is this box right here. Now, this has the same centroid as the first box, so the three is still gonna be there. But what is the area this time gonna be? Well, this length here is 4.5, and the height is 1.5, so 4.5 times 1.5, okay? And that is 20.25. So the whole key to this is, this is the hardest part, is coming up with what the heck is Q? It's, it's so hard. But I think if you'll think of it as a symmetric plane, if I got a tear horizontal here, I got to tear horizontal over there, right? So it's, you have to be symmetric about your, your shear plane, if you will, where that's going to tear across there. So now I've got a Q for B and a Q for C. Let's see if we can plug that in here and get our shear flow, okay? So Q, let's say at point B, is going to be equal to VQ over I. So 80 pounds, whoa, 80 has a zero after it, pounds times Q, which is 33.75, divided by, let's see, I, 229.75. 4 inches to the fourth, so all of those will get rid of that. It's going to leave me with pounds per inch, right? Remember, shear flow is force per length, okay? And so what do I have out of that? Let's see, that, that gives you what? That gives you 11.76. Um, pounds per inch, okay? And then QC, same concept. Same V, but this time I have Q, this Q, right? So that's 20.25 inches to the fourth, uh, inches to the cube, divided by I, which is 229.4 inches to the fourth, and that is 
7.06 um, pounds per inch. Okay. But that's what not what we want to know. We want to know just pure spacing. Okay. Well, the pure spacing is, goes like this, right? Spacing is equal to the force divided by this, right? So if I have the force, which was given to us down here, the nails can only support 30 pounds each. So let's see what B is going to be. Let's do spacing for B nails. That's 30 pounds divided by 11.76. Um, but hold on, when I shear this top off, look what's going on. Down here at the bottom, like one side's in compression, one side's in tension, but as far as the shear goes, it, it doesn't care, does it? So I've got to put, I've got another set of nails down here holding it together. I've got to divide this bottom guy by two because there's two rows of nails. There's one row here and there's one row there, okay? So each one's going to have to carry the load. So what is that going to be? That is going to give you um, 5.10 inches, right? Because this is, this is pounds per inch, right? And so those are going to cancel out. The inch is going to go to the top. And then spacing for the C nails is going to be the same thing. 30 divided by 7.06. But again, there's two rows of those nails, one on top, one on the bottom. Um, that's pounds per inch. And so that's gonna be, uh, I got 8.5 inches. So every 5.1 inches, you need to put a nail. Every 8.5 inches on the, on the vertical side, um, which is the horizontal nail, you need to put a nail, okay? So the whole point of this lesson was hopefully to help you come up with which Q do I use? How do I select Q? Remember, it has to be that symmetric plane. All right, I hope that helps. That's pretty complicated.